Yeah, it's got a nice heavy fretboard. It does. You know, it's got a nice heavy fretboard in the back of it. it it's a, a hard rock maple. Mm -hmm. And it started out as a satin finish, but I played it so much, I've actually gloss finished it myself. I'm just playing it so much. And, uh, but the, this is zebra wood, and the back is uh, black walnut. It's a. Uh, it's woods that you would see more often on like boutique basses than necessarily yeah. on guitars, but playing an A standard, it gives it like a real clarity and cut um, that I like a lot. Thanks to you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. You know what it kind of looks like? Like a cotton's eye. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah I love cotton's eye. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey guys, this is Elliot from Little Punk People here, and today I'm here with Mike from Yob. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> your songs remind me of getting away in nature to feel more calm. Where is your favorite place in the world to go to feel peace? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I mean, I definitely like to hit the track, and when I go running, I feel very peaceful. Um, Though, you know, we travel a lot and things can be very hectic in the world of, you know, touring around. And um, so I find that really, if I'm going to really have peace, I got to go inside for it. I like just hiking because that gets my mind off of everything. I'm just enjoying the nature and trees and stuff. Well, I'm the same way, you know, we go hiking and, and, you know, I grew up on about 180 acres of forest land that my folks bought when I was a kid. And so uh, I grew up in trees and nature and uh, there's no doubt that going out into nature has just a, a rejuvenating effect. Awesome. Yeah. Do you ever have dreams that you're back at the place you were when you had an out of body experience during surgery? I don't have dreams of it, but it is something that is, that it's something that hasn't left me. Um, so that experience of, of it, it's a weird experience because when I had it, I wasn't really, the period of time for which I had it, I just have kind of vague ticklings of memory around it. But what I do remember was that I, in fact, wasn't me. Um, I didn't have my name. I wasn't. Uh, a dad, I wasn't in a band, there was no um, past or future or anything. It was just this wide open, crazy, colorful, far out, like looking out over to over the ocean, except for the horizon was just purples and oranges and, and blues. And, um, and I was aware, I wasn't afraid, um, but I was not in the room. So like there was no, what was going on in the room was actually I was you know, it was a very different scene. And so that, and it was like my hard drive crashed. Yeah. And so like your hard drive crashed and, and sometimes you can take your hard drive to, a, to somebody who knows how to work on hard drives and they can retrieve it, the stuff that's on there. Sometimes they can retrieve most of it. And like you get everything, but you know, the eagles are gone. You're like, no, not the eagles. And so, um, or Creams Clearwater or something. So, uh, um, so for me, I think what happened was I just came back instantly a little different. And, um, and then that's just kind of been an unfolding process ever since then. What do you think was going on there? Like your soul left your body and you're like flying like o over like what you said, an ocean? Like were you like going up to heaven or something? Like well, what I saw in, in it's hard to describe, but it was that you know, like looking out over the ocean and there's like kind of a horizon to the ocean where you just can't see any farther. Well, this was kind of like that, where it just was like this infinite thing that kept going and going. But the big difference was it also felt like it was really, really close and personal. And it was, and I was aware of this thing that was also just all awareness, you know? And I keep like thinking back to like that Alex Gray painting of dying where it's just all the eyeballs going all the way up and like there's everything's conscious. And so that's what it felt like. And 
and I didn't feel any sense of separation from it. And I'm not saying that it's, you know, any particular God or heaven or anything like that. Um, and, but it is something that, uh, is certainly the, the, whatever it was in me that isn't my name and that isn't my upbringing and isn't where I was born and isn't defined by anything, that consciousness, um, remembers that consciousness and so and that consciousness is right here and right now and so that's just a part of as I you know some of the perception shifts I've had as a person and things that like I felt were good things I felt like I struggled with it's all got a little bit of space around it it's different crazy yeah what would you say now to one of your bullies when from childhood if you had the chance. Hmm. Well, if they're sitting here right in front of me now, I'd maybe forgive them and, uh, and then probably say thank you. Because um, it's not like being bullied is fun, and certainly um, I have an aversion to people victimizing other people and making them feel bad on any kind of level, um, whether it be first world stuff like my phone's better than yours my haircut's better than yours to you know much worse things I have an issue with that um and growing up I had a pretty difficult time with bullies and I was grew up came from a place where being a little bit of a freakazoid wasn't remotely okay and nobody was looking out for us and um but it also shaped who I am and um and I can't say that those things that happened to me didn't actually make me stronger and um, inform who I am now. So, you know, I, I wouldn't harbor, I wouldn't harbor angst towards them because also too, that's stuff that I have to carry around in me. And then that's like a poison, you know, and they or may, they may or may not be affected by it, but I, I am, and I don't want to carry that around. Great answer. <laughs> If aliens came to you and offered you to take you to a better planet to live and play shows on, would you go? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, sure, that sounds scary in a way, but if it's like aliens are like, wow, we dig your music and we want to bring you somewhere and put you on a different stage on another planet and, you know, you have a good, you know, nice green room and, you know. Yeah good sound check and you know crowd checking you out play to a new crowd you know different species of uh of uh being in the world uh in the universe sure what if they told you you couldn't leave after the show hmm well that would be interesting <laughs> um and uh you know being that they took me all the way there and i couldn't just like you know call an uber to get back to <laughs> to earth i don't know be insane. Yeah, I'd, you know, it could be, could be the best thing ever. Yeah. And who knows? No one knows. If there was two buttons in front of you, and one ends world hunger, and the other ends racism, which button would you push? I'd have to push both of them. I just have to break the rules. <laughs> you know, I just have to push both the buttons. At the same exact time. Exactly. It'd be like. Hey. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> Are you not afraid of death anymore since you had a near-death experience? I wouldn't say I'm not afraid of it. Um, because, you know, I still feel like I'm no closer to having knowledge of where that door leads. I think, though, having almost died, um, it certainly informs, like, a feeling of you know, the day before I got ill, like really ill, I didn't know that was going to happen that next day. And so, and that might have been the end of it. And so, you know, we don't know when our last good day is. And, you know, I, I haven't always lived well. You know, sometimes, you know, I mean, I've had periods in my life where I was very confused and dark and negative and, and did things I'm not proud of and said things that I regret and... And all I can do is look at that and look at a past self and go, well, I didn't know 
myself then, you know, but I know a better part of myself now having gone through that. And so all I can do is go forward, um, make amends where I can and try to live better. And um, because I want to be when when, you know, it's like the Grim Reaper came to my door and knocked and gave me the brochure. And, you know, I was like, all right, I'll be back. And that's the truth. So I want to feel like when it comes that I'm doing what I want, that what I'm carrying in my mind and my heart is things that I care about and that matter. And it's not to say that I'm not going to have moments of, of confusion or that I won't get angry or have a moment of blindness. Or, um, but I, I do feel like there is an overall sense that um, those times are much shorter and I'm much quicker to recognize them, much quicker to make amends. And, uh, and that's just how I want to carry myself now. So, you know, when I do finally meet death again, that I feel like I at least used a chunk of my life in a way that was conscious to the best of my ability. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's good talking to you. Yeah, you too. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. <laughs>